Okay, uh, greetings. So we're back here. This is uh, Real Talk, and uh, we're talking about uh, No Jive. Hey, we're back again. And this is health information to keep you very much alive. Today, we're going to talk about an interesting subject. Um, what it is, is uh, I read the, a newspaper that's here in St. Louis. It's called the St. Louis American. It's a black uh, newspaper. It has a lot of articles that affects black people. And I found something quite interesting. And let me just share my screen with you. So you can see uh, what the uh, title topic is. Let's go to this and here we go. And if you'll see that, you notice what it says here? It says here, the American Heart Association, let me, let me get this, move this out of the way. The American Heart Association study says that women, particularly black adults, have longer emergency, emergency room waits for chest pain. Now, that's kind of fascinating. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the actual newspaper article for you. And as I said, this uh, particular article came from uh, the newspaper called the St. Louis American. And let me get this bigger for you so you can see me. And uh, so we can get this roll and you can let me take that off. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and this is what the, actually I have the article right here. And I'm just going to read this to you. What it says here, this is by jo Joanne Weaver from the St. Louis American. It says, younger women and African-American adults experiencing chest pain have a longer ER wait to get care in the emergency room. It says they're more than male and white counterparts. Hmm. A fascinating research had just turned in that information, but we didn't need research to know that because we know that happens, unfortunately. It says, according to the Journal of the American Heart Association, women ages 18 to 55 have also received a less thorough evaluation for a possible heart attack and were less likely to be admitted to the hospital when presenting with similar symptoms as their male peers, potentially placing them at higher risk for poor outcomes. And I can testify to that. Uh, you see, I was in paramedic for 15 years. And unfortunately, fortunately this year, my sister called me about, oh, three o'clock in the morning. She's complaining of chest pain. So I immediately asked her, was she having any difficulty breathing? She said, no, but she felt she dizzy, lightheaded. So she called 911. I'm about like 20 minutes away from she lives in Missouri. So I, I drove my car over there and I went to the house and checked her out. And she indeed was having chest pain. And a good thing is that um, this wasn't necessarily cardiac related due to some if difficulty with her heart. Uh, cardio and encephalopathy or anything like that or bad trouble, she had just experienced the loss of her husband. So she was doing a lot of stress and the slightest thing would, would cause her to be really overexcited. She would have an anxiety panic attack, thus leading to chest pain. So this happened that particular early hours in the morning, about three o'clock. So when I got there, the 911, the ambulance had just pulled up. So I didn't want to you know, overshadow them, overrule them. So I simply watched, watched them as they treated my sister or attempted to treat my sister. The one thing I noticed, this comes from past experience of being a paramedic, they didn't bring that one piece of equipment into the house. No heart monitor, oxygen, nothing. So I stood by and I watched and I wasn't gonna watch too long. And they were asking her all these questions. I understand you do the patient assessment and you get the patient history, but the way they went about it was totally haphazard and it was non-urgent. So then my sister, the lady actually, one of the female paramedics, oh, by the way, I'll mention, they were both students fresh out of school. Not good, no experience. So they asked my sister, did she want to go to the ER? And that's when she looked at me and said, what do you think? And I said, hold on, let me let me explain myself. Listen, my name is so-and-so, so-and-so. Um, 
you all didn't check her blood pressure. You didn't put her on a heart monitor. You didn't see if she was having a cardiac rhythm, nor did you ascertain she had any trouble breathing, but you ask her if she wants to go to the ER. Of course she wants to go to the ER. Did you do your basic assessment? Of course not. So what kind of evaluation can you even present when you're talking to the hospital with patients complaining of chest pain? You didn't find out whether she had a cardiac history. You didn't ascertain whether she would take any meds. You didn't do the basics. So I can believe this article where Black people are less likely. Now, I'm not using a broad brush saying this is everywhere, but in most instances, Black people are treated less than human in the ER by certain individuals. This is not a racial bias or some bigotry type of assessment I'm making. I'm speaking from practical experience. So as I watch him and she say, okay, we'll take you to the ER. I said, well, definitely she'll take you. I said, are you going to put her on the monitor when she gets into trouble? And they looked at me and they want to know who I was. And I said, so my name is Dr. Walsh. I've also been a medic 15 years a nurse and, and I'm my specialist in emergency medicine. So I know exactly what I'm talking about. And they said, oh, 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 yeah, we, we, we're going to do that. I say, fine. And then you have the audacity not to put her on a stretcher, but to have her to walk outside. Complaining of chest pain. Just go ahead and walk. Really? So this article is hitting right on the money. I'm going to go ahead and read this. It says, says, whether or not the differences in chest evaluation directly translate into differences in outcomes, they represent a difference in the care individuals receive based on their race or sex. And that is important for us to know, said Dr. Darcy Banco, Chief Resident for Safety and Equality in the Department of Medicine, New York University Grossman School of Medicine. Despite a decline in the overall number of heart attacks, the number is rising among young adults. You see, beloved, yes, we as African-Americans, people of color, POC as they call us, one of those new term names, you know, we're at risk. We've always been at risk, but it's not because of our skin color. It's because of our lifestyle choices. What do you mean by that? Well, our lifestyle choices determine our health outcomes. We as a people, not all of us, we eat horribly. We eat on a traditional basis. And please don't tap in the comments about the African-American soul diet. That's another story. But we eat based upon how we've been taught that's been passed down to us. You all can probably relate to this. Most of us who had a mom or grandma who did that good old cooking special on them Sunday mornings, Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. After mama got through cooking, she had that metal can on the stove. And when she got through greasing and all that stuff, she didn't throw that grease away. Oh, of course not, child. Mama pulled that grease in that metal can that was on the stove and used it again down the road. Of course, no one is telling her that that's building up trans fat. That's causing problems with your heart. So mama used that same rancid old grease to cook other stuff, fish, hamburgers, chicken, whatsoever. And you ate that. That's a tradition that's not because we're black. That's tradition because it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation, and we suffer the consequence of a lifestyle choice. So naturally, when you get involved in an environment that doesn't treat you as if you're worth two nickels, that makes it even much more detrimental that your health care is not going to be on point. And they say things like, I know, because I was in medicine, they taught us this nonsense. Well, you as an African-American, you have a natural propensity to high blood pressure. That's a lie. There are many tribes, let me say tribe, many people of color, POC in Africa that don't have high blood pressure, don't have cancer, don't have diabetes. The reason they have that is because they eat the SAD diet, S-A-D, standard American diet, not because they're black. So let us learn from this. I'm not going to read the rest of this article, but I'm going to post something. If I put a link down here, it talks about how to take better care of yourself. And did you know it doesn't cost much, but it pays great dividends? What do you mean by that? If we're more cognizant about what we put into our body, this temple, we'll have a better outcome of our health and we don't have to depend on 911 to come and give us emergency care. There's things we can do at home. Let me tell you this, and I'm, I'm not saying a broad brush. Listen closely, beloved. Did you know cayenne pepper, a pinch, a tube of a teaspoon, under the tongue will stop a heart attack in his tracks. Did you know that? Now, they also doc, you prescribe in medicine. Cayenne is not a medicine, baby. That's a spice. But it has properties which opens the blood vessels up, gives more oxygen, more blood, and that chest pain will stop like that. Now, please don't misunderstand. Maybe I should make a disclaimer. I'm not saying it's grandma or grandpa complaining of chest pain. You go in the cup and dump a, a whole a, a carton, a, 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 a cup full of cayenne pepper in his mouth. You got some problems. Don't do that. 
but I'm saying there are some natural remedies that will help ease the pain, cognitive subside until one can have a complete medical evaluation to see what's going on in the person's life. And then you go accordingly. Now, when I say medical evaluation, I'm not saying go to your doctor and get checked out, nor am I saying don't go. What I'm saying is you want to be educated about the heart, you only got one, how to take care of it, what to put in the body that's gonna help it and not hinder it. So you learn some natural thing that the old folks, as you say, them old down home remedies, they knew. And you found they had less heart trouble heart attacks. But as time went on, time progressed, and we became more progressive. We began to eat more progressive, but that progression has caused us to degress and go down, and our health is suffering. Beloved, one of my favorite Bible texts come from the book of Solomon. It says, why will you die before your time? We don't have to. Be aware of what you're putting into your body. Be aware of what your body is trying to tell you. Don't ignore it. And at the same time, listen, Continue to watch our channel, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and I'll be telling you some more simple things, some natural remedies, some things to do to help us. You don't have a high blood pressure because you're black. Don't nobody tell you that. You don't have a high blood pressure because you're eating wrong all the time because sometimes we eat right but still do wrong stuff. You see, there are eight doctors that are crucial to anybody's health, whether you're black, white, green, Chinese, African, Afghanistan, Martian, or you're a predator, whatever you are. I mean, predator as in the movies, not the sexual group. You see, there are eight doctors that come from the beginning of time. Who are they? You all know them. You know their names. You don't need a prescription. You don't need a referral. All you need to do is acknowledge, believe, obey, and apply. What are those eight doctors, bro? Here we go. Number one, first, eight, first doctor is called nutrition. If you put the proper foods into your body, you can bypass a lot of health. Not only eating snacks, zoom, zoom, and wham, yeah, four bucks of four buckets of cookies, ice cream, that all the, everything come in the bag, box about, and it's sure good for you. Processed food is a killer. You need to eat fresh, natural, explosive nature as you can. So the first doctor is called nutrition, proper nutrition. The next doctor is called exercise. But doc, I'm too old. I can't even, I can't go to no jail. I can't get no prescription. I said nothing about a subscription, prescription to go to a gym. I said exercise. Do you know the easiest, freest exercise you can do, whether you whether you eight, 80, walk. But if you can't walk while you're at home, you can walk in place. Walking is the easiest, most beneficial exercise that you can do. It works out, gives you a good cardio, helps on muscle development, helps your breathing, gives the blood circulating, walking. How much does walking cost? Free. Well, I can't get to the gym. I didn't say, no, I'm not going to the gym. You got some stairs? Well, I got some stairs. You ain't got no stairs? Step in place. But when should I do all that? You, instead of being a couch bunny or a couch potato, when you're sitting on the couch looking at television, television, I should say, every time a commercial comes on, do some steps. While you're sitting down in the couch or whatever, do some steps. Lift your legs up until that commercial goes off. Every time a commercial comes on, do that. You'll be amazed that little bit how to help your heart cardio, how much of that costs? Nothing. The next doctor is water. Are you drinking enough water? Now, let me clarify. I'm not talking the water that's coming out your faucet. That stuff will kill you. We'll talk about that, what's actually in your water. But simple, fresh water. Now, I'm not talking about going on by no. Now, I'm not, I'm not promoting anybody's name brand because nobody's paying me. And if they were, I wouldn't do it. I'm not talking about the Sony. I ain't talking about Pure. I ain't talking about all these name label brand water. I'm talking about fresh, pure, distilled water. Yeah, I said distilled. That's healthy for you. And by the way, for those y'all who say, I heard about distilled. It'll leach all the chemicals and neutralize your body. That's not true. Think about this. Did you know that in the Bible, the Bible tells you you should drink distilled water? <laughs> Shut your mouth. I never heard that. That's why this program is called Real Talk. No job. Real health information to keep you alive. Talks about this to what? Let me ask you something. There's a, a simple comparison. You know, when I was coming up, my mom used to iron, old-fashioned iron. Not the kind that you had to pour water in, but the kind you had to heat that sucker up and then iron until it got cold. But then they came with the modern room. You have to pour the water and you can use some steam. And they would always tell you in bold language on that box, don't use tap water. They say use 
distilled water. Why is that? Because distilled water wouldn't rot off the inside of the iron. Well, if they're going to tell you that so the iron wouldn't rot itself out, and how would you know that? The next time you pick up an iron and you, you put regular tap water in there, look at the bottom where that steam comes. It's all brown and gritty and grunty and jacked up. That's what tap water does because it has some harsh chemicals in there that would jack up the inside of that iron. Well, what do you think is happening to your delicate inside when you drink that same water from the tap? Think about that. But that's another doctor. The next doctor is called sunshine, the sun. Now, please, we've heard all these lies about the sun and get you cancer, so you got to stay out the sun. Think about something. Let's think now. The people who live in the, in the I'm not going to say East, because that's jacked up. The people who are desert dwellers, high accessibility to the sun. You ever notice they now have any issues of cancer, skin cancer? But over here, they tell you, go out in the sun, you'll get your skin cancer. That's not true. That's not what causes skin cancer. It's other things that are going on, bad nutrition, poor hygiene, bad circulation, that's a precursor to contributing to contracting cancer. But we as a melanin people, melanin, black folks, dark skin, we don't have much skin cancer, but we can't get it. Why? Because we have poor nutrition. We have poor living and we don't drink enough water. We don't get enough exercise. We don't get enough, enough this other doctor called rest. We'll talk about that next. So sun, the sun is important for you to help to create what's called vitamin D. Did you know your brain that you got in your head? And I know y'all got a brain because y'all watching this program. Did you know vitamin D has only one number one way that it gets to your brain? You know what way that is? Think about it. It's not through a pill. It's not through a drink. It's not through an injection. It's through your eyes. The sunlight makes its way in your eyes. When it hits your skin, converts that to cholesterol. That cholesterol converted to what's called another chemical, which calls vitamin D. That's where your skin and your blood, but your brain gets it more quicker. How? When you're outside looking outside, please don't go outside and stir up the sun. That's crazy. But when you're outside, the sunlight is going to get to your eyes and your brain gets that too. It helps metabolize it. Vitamin D, baby. But we want to be cool and all that good stuff. So we put on our shades to block out the sun. I've seen brothers and sisters even wear shades in the house at night. That's a whole other story. So, beloved, that's the next doctor. The next doctor is rest. The human body needs rest. If you're not getting at least eight hours of good sleep at night, that's going to take you its toll on your body. You ever heard this phrase, black don't crack? Well, there's some truth to that. When you get enough rest, your skin will have these wrinkle issues. And some cultures get called them crow's feet, you know, mouth cracking, all that stuff. You need to rest, beloved. I know, I know you got to work. I understand that you have to work, but you don't have to work continuously all the time because if you don't get enough rest, you ain't going to be working no how. But then again, you're going to be giving somebody else a job. They're going to be working. You know who that is? Or the undertaker. Because you're going to die out too soon. Why will you die for your time? So the eight doctors, you got nutrition, you got exercise, you got water, you got sunshine, you got rest. What, what more are we missing? You also have missing called temperance. That means being moderate in what you do. Don't eat everything just because you can. Everything you eat, my mommy said, it may be good to you, but it ain't good by you. So you need to eat properly in moderation. You don't have to eat like cows constantly chewing all day your your stomach needs a rest. Did you know it takes almost four to five hours for your food to digest? So if you eat late at night and you can't get up in the morning, oh, well, I just can't get up in the morning. Because you don't eat late at night. I'm, I'm, I told you I wasn't going to use all these fancy medical terms, but I can if you want me to. I'm going to use talk simple, real talk. The later at night that you eat, your stomach still has to digest that food that's in your stomach. And it takes blood as a precursor to help the digestion process start. So when you want to get up in the morning, why do they call that breakfast, breaking the fast? Your stomach's not rest, it's working overtime. So when you need to get up in the morning, the blood that should be in your brain, so you wide awake, you got pep in your step, you got a dip in your hip, and you're ready to get your, get your work on, and you're fully cognizant, fully alert. The blood is still in your stomach trying to digest that food that you ate late last night. And you wonder why you can't get up. So then we compound that factor by dissing that doctor called Dr. T. 
temperance, Dr. Rest, and we start putting chemicals in our body. Am I talking too harsh, y'all? Yeah, I am. Because I love it once you live. We start putting chemicals into our body to make us wake up. You ever heard of Red Bull? You ever heard of caffeine? You ever heard of coffee? Really? You ever heard of nicotine? We got to get, we got to get the smoke, we got to put the dope, and then we start choking. <laughs> See, simple remedies. And another doctor we got, it's called trust. Having faith. I ain't talking about having faith in that person want to check. You know what I'm talking about having faith in somebody writes you prescription in Greek that you can understand that when you take these drugs, they got more problems with what you got. Ah, uh, doc, I, I'm having trouble with my stomach. Uh, let me write you a prescription for Prilosec. Give you some medicine for your stomach to help you digest. You got R-E, what we call R-E, R-E, excuse me, I'm going too fast. You have what's called R-E-F-D, or GFR, it's called GERD, gastric esophageal reflux disease. Man prescribes you some Prilosec to calm your stomach down, baby. The Prilosec causes some more problems that you don't want to have, you know. Why well, do that when you eat properly at the right time, not late at night, get a full a full night's rest so your body can digest that stuff. So in the morning, you got you wake up wide, alert, and awake, you see. Doctors. What are they? Nutrition. Exercise. Water. Sunshine. Rest. What's the other one? Temperance and trust. Trust in the creator, the person who made you who knows his body, who knows what to put in. Oh, that man, he on that channel preaching. I didn't preach not one priest, brother. All I'm talking to you is science. I'm talking to you medical facts. And I'm talking medical facts not based upon what the medical doctors say because all of them ain't got good sense. I'm talking medical facts, medical science, true science from the one who made this, who knows what's best to go in this. Because if you don't put what's supposed to go in this, you're going to be seeing that. And that is the MD. And if he don't work out for you, then you're going to be seeing the other man start with DD. That's the dead dude. Who's the dead dude? He called the undertaker. But seriously, beloved, there's no reason to die early. We should live our lives fully and in good health. I know a lot of people who live long, but they don't have a quality of life. It's a big difference. Beloved, keep watching. I'm going to leave a link down here. In fact, while we're talking, I'm going to leave a link down. You can go and see some of the things we're talking about, and I'll give you the evidence, and you can make your choice. I won't be mad at you if you choose to ignore this conversation. That's fine. I will not be mad at all. But I will be saddened to know that another brother, another sister, has shortened their lifestyle because, all because, all because of a bad choice, not knowing. Knowing is wonderful. Not knowing can be detrimental. So, beloved, you have a good day. Bless. Subscribe. Hit that bell. Comment. And we can have questions. And I'll answer questions. Not because of what I feel, what I think, what I believe, but because of what this body needs, how it was created, and what it needs to subsist. Come on, I'll live long and prosper. Isn't that what Spock said on Star Trek? That's weird. Anyway, be blessed. You have a good day. God bless you all. Yeah.